All right, so now that we know how to find the uh, local and global maxima and minima of different functions using first and second derivatives, we can do some applied optimization problems, okay? And so these come in lots of different flavors. Um, so I'll, I'll just do a couple and then hopefully you can get a sense of, of the process by which you would do uh, one of these optimization problems. They basically boil down to finding the maximum or minimum of some function that you have to figure out from context, okay? So let's do uh, this problem where we have a, uh, a spherical cell, okay? And this cell is going to um, absorb nutrients, absorbs nutrients according to the function A of R equals four thirds pi k1, sorry, um, four k1 pi r squared, right? So it's proportional to the uh, surface area here, I think. Okay, so it's absorbing nutrients on the surface area and consuming nutrients according to the function C of R, right? Which is proportional to the volume, right? So can it, once the nutrients are inside the cell, then it can just kind of dissolve them or consume them on whatever processes it needs to. So this is proportional to the volume, okay? So this is proportional to surface area. And this one is proportional. So this would be K2 times B, which is the volume. Okay, so one of these functions is proportional to surface area, one of them is proportional to the volume, okay? And our optimization problem, right, is we want to determine the radius of the cell for which the net rate of nutrients, which the net you know, rate of increase of nutrients is largest. Uh, increase of nutrients, N of R, is largest. Okay? So with these applied optimization problems, you want to first figure out uh, the function that you're trying to optimize and then uh, optimize it, right? So step one is you need to figure out what are we optimizing, right? So based on this context, right, we're trying to determine the radius for which the net rate of increase, n of r, is biggest. So the function we're trying to optimize is n of r, right? And this net rate would be uh, absorption minus consumption, right? We absorb nutrients into the cell and then we consume them, so the net increase of nutrients that are just kind of sitting in the cell would then be the amount we absorbed minus the amount we consumed, okay? So our function is this, 4k1 pi r squared minus four over three pi k2 r cubed, right? Where k1 and k2 are just these different rates of increase, uh, the rate of absorption and the rate of consumption, okay? So we want to optimize this n of r function, right? with respect to r, the radius of the cell, okay? So we want to find the cell radius that maximizes n of r, right? We're not looking for a minimum of this function, we're looking for a maximum, okay? So then step two is we solve the uh, or solve for the global max for this function, right? So in solving for a global maximum, we have to look for, so step one of this process would be to look for critical points to find the local max of our function, right? N of R, okay? So if we look for this, okay, we have n of r 
is 4k1 pi r squared minus 4 over 3 pi k2 r cubed. All right, so to find a critical point, that's where n prime of r is equal to 0. So we take the derivative with respect to r. When we take the derivative of this with respect to r, we treat 4 k1 and pi as constants. So we get 2 times 4 times k1 pi r. And then we treat k2 as a constant, so this becomes 4 pi over 3 times 3 k2 r squared. Okay, so let's simplify this a bit. We get 8 k1 pi r minus 4 pi k2 r squared. And we want to solve for when the derivative is 0. Okay, because that will tell us where we have a critical point, which will tell us where our local maximum is. Okay. So we solve this equation. Let's uh, factor some stuff out here. So we have zero is equal to, let's do a factor of four pi r, right? So I factor out four pi r from both of these. I'm left with two k1 minus k2 times r. All right, and then four pi r equals zero. So this splits up into two zeros, right? I have four pi r is equal to zero, and we have two k1 minus k2 r is equal to zero. This first one gives us r equals zero as a critical point. And the second one gives us, uh, let's move this to the right, we have two k1 equals k2 r. So that gives us r is equal to two k1 over k2. Okay, so these are our critical points. These are our critical points, okay? We want to find out which ones are the maximum, right? Which is the max. Okay, so let's use the second derivative test because that I think is the easiest in this case. Let's use the second derivative test. So for point one, we will check the second derivative at r equals zero. For point two, we'll check the second derivative at r equals two k one over k two. So the first derivative is here, right? It is n prime of r was eight k one pi r minus four k two pi r squared. So if we take another derivative, we get n double prime of r is equal to eight k one pi. And then here we get minus 4 times 2 times k2 pi r. So that gives us, uh, let's factor out the 4 pi again. Let's factor out 8 pi. 8 pi, then we have k1 minus k2 r. Okay, so the second derivative at 0 is going to be 8 pi times k1. And uh, maybe I didn't mention this before, but k1 and k2 Right, these are the rate of absorption, rate of consumption. K1 and K2 are both positive. Right, they're just positive constants that determine the rate of absorption or consumption. So their rates so they're positive. Okay, and so that means that the second derivative at zero is positive. Right, which means n is or n of r is concave up at r equals zero, which means it has a local minimum there, right? Concave up looks like this. This is a place where the first derivative is zero, so that's where we have our tangent slope being zero. So then that means that it is a local minimum, okay? Let's check the derivative at our second point, right? So 2k1 over k2 is our second critical point, right? So at n double prime, of 2k1 k2 we get 8 pi k1 minus k2 times 2k1 over k2 we're left with 8 pi times k1 k2's cancel so we get minus 2k1 all right so then no matter what k1 is this is now minus 8 pi k1 and k1 is some positive number so this whole thing is negative Right, so the second derivative is negative, so n of r is concave down at r equals 
uh, 2 k1 over k2 right so it looks like this and this is a place where the tangent slope is zero so we know that we're at the local maximum okay cool so then uh, because we have no boundaries for this problem right so we're looking for some sort of global max for this function right and we basically found that we look at our sine table f f prime or sorry this is n and n prime and n double prime and then we'll do r here right so at r equals zero we have first derivative is zero this is our local min right we said it was uh, negative here sorry positive here so it was concave up which meant it was a local minimum right and then at our other point which is 2k1 over k2 right we said that was where the first derivative was zero but the second derivative was negative right which means that this was our local max okay and because the second derivative is negative here that means that this derivative is decreasing right so it's pointing down so that means that this has an inflection point somewhere in here because it switches from positive to negative right and if we were to do this out if i was to finish this timetable which i'm not going to get into right now um, because it'll take too long uh, but there's basically an inflection point somewhere in here right so this is positive positive and then it switches to negative negative right at the inflection point which we won't calculate for now, but we could, right? We'd say, okay, that's that. So then these were increasing. And we know this is a local minimum, which means that we were negative and then positive, right? And then maximum means it was positive and then negative, right? So this was uh, decreasing and then it was increasing, increasing, and then decreasing again, okay? So our function is gonna look like this for r versus n. So when r is zero, right, n is also zero, right? This is n of r, every term here has r in it, right? If I look at what n of r is, so our n of zero, it's also zero. If I look at n of two k1 over k2, it's some complicated number but it's certainly not gonna be zero, okay? So if we look at this function, we start at zero. At this critical point, we have two K1 over K2, right? So this is our minimum. And then it was decreasing from the left, increasing from the right. Wherever this is, N of R star, let's call it, right? So wherever that is, it is a local maximum. So it goes up and then down and then it's decreasing from there. And over here, we can ignore, since cells can't have negative radius, right? So that's unphysical. So then, because it's increasing up to this local maximum and then decreasing from then on, and it's never gonna go back up to increasing, we know that this is the global max, okay? And that's often going to be the case for these sort of applied problems is even if you're not explicitly given a domain that's bounded where you're going to be able to be able to check those endpoints oftentimes there's only one maximum and everywhere else uh, is decreasing away from it or unphysical okay so this is non-physical on the left so we can ignore the function there because it doesn't make sense to talk about the nutrient absorption and consumption of a cell with a negative radius because that that's absurd okay cool so i'll stop the video here and then i'll just do another one for the next example all right